refugees, shooting everybody who is not going to Rwanda. It was a blood, it was a bloody war. That's when I escaped. Um, I worked in forest of Congo about five months. Behind us, there were RPF killing us. During these five months is when you see this UN report were published in um, this October 1st. And the report is suggesting that it may be a genocide. But for five months, I witnessed a real genocide. Friends, family members being killed. I saw mothers who really put the children down. In Africa, we carry babies now back. No, you will see a mother who say, okay, this child is really slowing me down. If I don't put her, him or her down, the RPF is going to kill me. The children, want, soon as they are abandoned, the story is over. I saw this with my own eyes, where RPF surrounded innocent civilian, like me, I was 16 years old, 17 years old, growing in forest, running away in Congo. Um, at the end, what you see in the CNN is Hutu are killers. I am Hutu. Do I have machete? I ask sometimes, uh, my friends, when they ask me at school, they're like, oh, who are you? Are you Hutu or are you, you Tutsi? And when I say I am Hutu, they're like, oh, okay. No, just for the sake of reaction, understanding where the narrative is, when I say I am Hutu, they are shocked. And the next question is, so, uh, is this true, really, Hutu, you killed the Tutsis? Yeah. Um, what can you do about all this? Uh, I think that as Keith say that um, these corporations are involved in this violence are the one to put uh, this to the end. I think being involved, I guess boycotting a product sometimes can be okay. Um, I, I'll tell you a little story about how I get engaged. So I was telling my wife, I'm like, I'm so sorry, I cannot really buy a diamond for you. When I was in the Congo working, I stumbled into a little rock, just like this, it's shiny. I did not even know that was a diamond. And when I got to a road block, they found I had that little rock in my pocket. I was almost killed. I was like, no, 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 I don't know what it is. Can you take it? When I arrived at Kinshasa, I found out I had a diamond. And that diamond was big enough probably I could get hundreds and hundreds of thousands. And I did not even know what it was, but I was going to be killed about it. So I told my wife at the time I was in, getting engaged, I was like, well, I really don't know how I feel about taking you to Tiffany and buy you a ring. So if you have a girlfriend, if you have a boyfriend, the big rock you buy, the biggest it is, the biggest contribution you're making to kill someone like me, who did not even know where was a diamond. And you're asking what can you do? Yeah, if you hear me saying this, you'll be like, wow, that guy is crazy. Does really he think that he, we can be able to do this? Yeah, the more you're buying that diamond, the more you're killing someone like me who never knew what was diamond. Thank you. We have um, one question from Agnes. Thank you, Gédéon. He was um, 14 in 94, so he was 10 when the RPF invaded in 1990, and 14 when he fled to Congo and when did you get to Kinshasa? 1997? 97. So he's 17 when he ended up in jail in Kinshasa for 
two months? Three months. Three months in a dark hole where they cut him with a machete and his knee and just one, one amazing uh, escape after another for, for 14 years. N no, yeah, no, eight, eight years, eight years, yeah, so that's the courage of, that's the portrait of courage, I'm s that's the portrait of courage is that surviving, walking across the Congo and surviving that. So. I want to ask do Tanzanites, which could be supplemental for diamonds, uh, do they contribute in the same atrocities? I don't know anything about Tanzanite, but if it's coming from Tanzania, Tanzania is, yeah, I would say, but I don't know much about Tanzanite, I'm sorry. Yeah, s'il vous plaît. Uh, Yalengi, s'il vous plaît. Oui, uh, je voudrais quand même que que, que vous puissiez uh, spécifier deux, uh, deux choses ou trois choses. Quand vous dites uh, les FDRL, c'est vrai. Ils, uh, you want to say? She's saying that she would like uh, you to be specific about a couple of things. Okay. Quand vous parlez de FDRL, je pense qu'il faut bien spécifier que c'est le groupe que Kagame a créé. Parce que comme il l'a dit, comment expliquer que ces gens qui ont fui dans la forêt la, la fin forêt, la forêt équatoriale du Congo, aujourd'hui se retrouve avec des armes hein, pour pouvoir violer et tuer à l'est du Congo. So let me answer that piece of it. The, the FDLR is a very complex sub subject. Il est un subject complex, oui. Uh, the FDLR, definitely, there were FDLR who fled. I mean, this is my understanding. There were FDLR who fled from Congo, from Rwanda, who were legitimate uh, former fighters of the Rwandan government who tried to defend the country. Uh, and they fled, Rwanda, they fled Rwanda in the face of an, a war of aggression and they established themselves in Congo. Many FDLR made it all the way to Congo Brazzaville. Mm -hmm. And uh, many FDLR in Congo are the creation of Paul Kagame. So there are multiple kinds of FDLR. Some of them are working with Kagame in the mineral sector and exactly. shipping the weapons in. Some mm -hmm. of them are true FDLR who would never work with Kagame and would like to cut his head off just as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. So the forces Democratic liber forces of Democratic Liberation Forces for Rwanda, which is basically the comprised the true FDLR are people who fled Rwanda in 1994 and set up in Congo and received support from outside of Congo or from, for example, the FDLR was armed at some point by the Kabila government to fight back during part of the war against the second invasion of Rwanda in Uganda. Mm -hmm. So it's a it's a very complex organization, but for the most part. They're, most FDLR are not the killers they're portrayed to be. There are some very honest FDLR in the Congo, and there are some FDLR that work with Kagame. But Kagame will always use, and Museveni will always use the, the tactic of, of, uh, of, of arming and training people and making them pre appear as if they are the enemy to commit atrocities that will then justify Kagame's military actions. Do you agree with that analysis of the FDLR, Yelengi? Because please share your analysis of the FDLR. Justement, c'est ça que je voulais dire parce que, vous savez, on fait de ces victimes. La plupart de FDR, des Hutus qui sont rentrés au Rwanda ont été prises en otage, leur famille prise en otage par Kagame. Comme vous le dites, ils ont été entraînés et c'est Kagame qui a fourni des armes et ils sont revenus au Congo. Ce sont eux qui sont dans les mines. Mm. As you were explaining, the, the FDLR who went back to the Congo. FDR, FDLR. FDLR. Yeah. Who went back to the uh, to Rwanda, uh, were taken. Uh, some of their family members were taken hostages by Paul Kagame, mm -hmm. 
who then trained them, gave them weapons, and sent back, send them back to the Congo. They are the ones who are now working in the mines and overseeing the... Uh